Hello everyone. Good evening, good evening, game coach. Uh, hi Nitin, hi Nitin. Hello, hello Pranidharu. Hello everyone. Let's just wait for people to join in. Good evening, good evening, Danish Karu. Two more minutes, guys. Good evening, good evening, Arif Khan. Guys, am I audible? I mean, like, is the voice clear? Yes, thank you, thank you very much. So, yeah, is it five? I think it was something. It was starting a session. Uh, some of you people uh, are texting me about, you know, what are the resources that I have used, you know, uh, uh, I have used this, you know, uh, Cyber security roadmap 
provided by Edam community. I will give you I will provide you guys with the link. This is the roadmap guys. Uh, up to 100 days. I am currently in 95th day. This roadmap uh, is mainly like based on or you know focuses on penetration testing i will give you guys the link i will give i will provide the link in description so let's just start session this okay guys today is the day three and we are going to cover you know uh, about networking and TCP IP and OSI module. Oh, okay, oh, what is networking is? Networking refers to the practice of connecting computer systems and other devices to share resources, information and other services. Adding on to that, I mean like uh, it, it also involves design, uh, implementation, management and also maintenance of data communication system which allows you know uh, devices to communicate and exchange data so like uh, at the starting uh, i mean like way back you know in in the 80s or you know in the 70s when they first invented the computer the main problem was okay it had all the attributes you know it uh, it had you know uh, some protocols to stream the videos, uh, you know, it had some attributes to store the data, but the main problem is, uh, you know, it couldn't talk with another computer. I mean, what's the point in not talking with another computer guys? Like if you just have a laptop, imagine you just have a laptop or a computer and your friend has that, you know, uh, you know, other laptop and you want to exchange this piece of data with him, but unfortunately you can't. That was the situation in the 80s or like, you know, in the late 70s, I guess. So then they have introduced the Ethernet cable. And I'll, I'll, I'll just, you know, um, oh, okay, yeah. These Ethernet cables were introduced, you know, to you know, exchange data between two computers, which is really good. And, and also this, these, uh, Ethernet cables or any other cables we use, you know, to connect devices are called as layer one devices. Let's just note it down. Okay. Ethernet cables layer one devices and what is this layer one and what are you talking about i mean yes you might have these dots i will clear clear the dots in a minute yes in, in a minute so yeah this is the ethernet cable and next another problem arrived i mean like with an ethernet cable you can probably connect two devices to computer device or to what do you say to two devices can talk to each other that's good but what if i have another friend let's just say i have another friend c i'm talking if i am a and i'm talking with b and i have another friend c and i i want my computer to speak with that uh, computer also and what is the other option that i have left I'll just take another uh, another Ethernet cable. I'll just make another port in my computer and I'll connect it to his computer. That was, you know, idea. But um, I just need like, I want to talk with 10 different computers. What should I do? Then they introduced, I mean like way back in the 80s, they introduced hub and <laughs> I don't know why I said this is the dumbest. You guys will know the reason why I've said the dumbest. Hubs. 
Hubs are also called as layer one devices. Uh, okay, hubs. Layer one devices. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so I'll just give you guys a real time simulation of how hubs work. Okay. Yes. Okay, guys. This is Cisco Packet Tracer, which is developed by Cisco. Of course, you guys must have known Cisco, right? This is a uh, it's a networking company organization. Yes. Okay. So, guys, uh, for you know, for uh, better visual visualization, I have you know kept this uh, hub here, and I've created some users like Harry, Ron, Malfoy, Harmony. I mean, like. I have to thank Network Church for this because he made it possible. So yeah. So let's just take uh, okay, Hermione's laptop. I mean, Cisco Packet Tracer is so cool, guys. Just look at this. You know, when you click on the user, you can just see how uh, what, about uh, is their computer. You know, what you can access through their computer. It's just like an what you say, and virtual machine. Not exactly a virtual machine, but I'm like, you know, a simulated mode of machine, you know, which you can experience how how does this uh, layers work, how how information exchanges. Uh, let me just go through mm, desktop, Harmony's desktop, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, let's just. Let's keep on the simulation panel on and uh, I'm on his laptop. Yes, okay, sir. Open up the command prompt and let's just say, oh, okay. Here I want to talk with Ron. I mean, like, Hermione talks to wants to talk with Ron. What do I do? I just Ping ten dot one dot two dot three. Okay, yeah, and you might like you know if you are beginners, you might you guys might like you know face some difficulties understanding what this four digit number is like four uh, numbers separated by these three dots is. It is an IP address, guys, and I will explain you guys in a bit what is an IP address and all. Don't worry, it's cool. So, I'm trying to communicate with Ron's laptop. I'm trying to com communicate with Ron. Just enter. Okay, just see, guys, there's this you know packet created here her uh, near Hermione, and I'll just you know. Uh, uh, show the next operation what does it do uh, hub receives, re receives a packet of you know uh, that she's trying to communicate with Ron but hub is a very dumb device guys see what it does it just sends the packet to everyone uh, who are connected in the network I mean like you know uh, it gives a packet to Harry, it gives a packet to Malfoy, and also it gives a packet to Ron. It's not good, right? I mean, it's like it creates more, uh, what do you say, um, hassle. Because if you, uh, let's just say there's this is uh, application and you are trying to communicate with your friend uh, and you type the message and send it to your friend, but that message just directs to everyone. It is such an hassle, guys. So, even after Ron receives the packet, let's see, uh, it goes to the hub and it sends again to everyone who's connected uh, through that hub in the network. That is why I've said the hubs are dumbest. <laughs> so, coming back, you know, uh, yeah, the hubs are also called as layer one devices and then came okay and also yeah 
this is another problem right you know what if i want to communicate with uh, you know another guy in the same network and and no other people in the network should know about you know me communicating with other person so and the problem was people needed a device which is smarter which had brain the hub does didn't have a brain it just an uh, what you say device which connects people but they needed some device with brain then they introduced switch the smartest uh here this is you know a uh, diagrammatical representation not diagrammatical pictorial picture representation of you know uh, the switch switch is the smartest guys okay i'll guys i will show you guys how switch works in the simulation mode i'll just reset this simulation i will go bigger. and yes again there are four users mark Denny, Lisa, and John. They are connected, you know, through the switch. Here is a switch, guys, and they are connected through a switch. Here are their, uh, you know, IP addresses. And also, guys, uh, I forgot to tell you, switches. Layer two devices. And don't worry, guys. Don't worry. I'm just noting it down for a better understanding. I'll tell you guys later in this video only, in this session only, what this layer one, layer two is all about. Okay, and yeah. So uh, let me go into Mark's laptop. Uh, you know, Mark's desktop. Right, wait. Let me open the simulation mode and uh, just close Harmony's desktop and open Mark's desktop and uh, i'll open his desktop and open his command prompt okay i'll try to connect with here lisa okay <coughs> i'll just try ping 10 dot 1 dot 1 dot Sorry, yes, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Sorry, guys, I've been sick. So, yeah, I'm trying to con communicate with uh, Lisa here, Lisa's laptop, which is connected through switch. So, I'm pinging Lisa through Mark's laptop, yes. Okay. Let's just see in the simulation mode how the packet travels. See, here is a packet, uh, you know, made or you know, just yeah, okay, made. I'll move forward in time. Let's just see, okay, yeah. Packet is forwarded to the switch. And see, switch is uh, what do you say, the smartest. I have said this is the smartest because switch understands, okay. The mark here is trying to ping Lisa. Okay, let's just send the packet to Lisa. It only sends a packet to Lisa. Whereas in uh, you know, in the case of Hub, when Harry tries to ping uh, Ron, uh, you know the message just sends to everyone. The Hub sends a message to everyone. So yeah, Lisa receives the packet here, and I'll move forward in time. Yeah, not forward in time, guys. I'll just simulate the what do you say the situation, not forward in time. Sorry. Yeah. So you okay, wait. Okay. Favor Garu. Good evening. Good evening, Andy. Yeah. So see, even after Lisa receiving the uh, packet, uh, then after she receives, when she sends back it to the mark, it only sends to the mark. Whereas you guys know, you guys have been seeing, you know. Uh, the packet which is received by Malfoy, I guess, you know, in the pre previous simulation, uh, the hub still, you know, sends it to everyone. So I think you guys had an, what do you say, a 
you know and an, an idea of how switches and hubs work so guys any any other doubts in this hubs and switches like any doubts come on guys free feel feel free to ask and if there is no doubt uh, just text me there's no doubt and this you know give me a chat and let's move on to the next topic no yeah thanks nitin uh, okay i think the topic is clear for you guys no so yeah rangadas karu yeah and let's move on to the next topic okay um, yeah the og okay guys i don't know why i have named this the og just uh, what is a forget this just uh, you know i'll talk about routers and wap <coughs> sorry sir yeah wap wireless access points so what do you guys think you you guys know what a router is right you know uh, you know you, you guys have seen it you know in your houses or in your organizations in your college etc but what is wap i will clear you guys that you know has a... so guys you know um uh, wap i'll just talk about wap now uh, wireless access point uh, you know it serves distinct function within a network so wap is an device that allows wireless communication within devices to connect to a wired network using wifi i mean it creates a wireless local area network wlan wlan and acts as a central hub for wireless connectivity and it also enable devices to access the network without physical cables and uh, you know these wireless access points devices typically do not perform any routing functions and just they just focus on providing wireless connectivity and you know talking about routers a router is a networking device guys just you know uh, keeping keep it in the mind a wap is a device just a device a router is a networking device that forwards you know uh, packets uh, data packets between computer networks i mean uh, it connects multiple networks and directs traffic between them i mean uh, okay i should also tell you guys about the routers routers are called layer 3 devices no problem is i will clear the topic of what layers are so like you know in summary uh, a wap is a specifically designed uh, device uh, to facilitate wireless connections while a router is a device responsible for managing and directing data between different networks which may include both wired and wireless connections okay yeah so moving on to the next topic tcp ip versus osl do you guys uh, like any of you guys have an idea of idea about what tcp ip and osl is
protocol yes yes that's good that's good yes it is a protocol and can you guys give me the full form of uh, you know tcp ip and uh, osi transmission control protocol sri jagaru yeah that's good that's good and osi no okay so back in the days you know in 1990s i guess you know there was this battle between tcp ip and osi you know it was just like not a battle just a clash of concepts and standards let's just say that both the models were developed around the same time but with different purposes and uh, purposes and approaches you know but they each found their each uh, each found their own place in the realm of networking uh, okay i'll just tell you guys what went wrong okay transmission control protocol networking protocol that's correct so jagaru so what went wrong is the osi model open source interconnection i guess mm, yeah open source open source interconnection yes it was created by iso iso international organization for standardization i guess standardization i okay it was created by iso which was an attempt to standardize network communication protocols like it featured a comprehensive seven layer framework uh yes seven layer framework i have been talking about the layers guys these are these layers and uh, you know aiming to provide a universal guideline for how network protocol should function and also yeah however osi model faced you know several challenges like the osi model seven layer structure uh, this is this yeah this is the seven layer structure of osi you know it has its own uh, what do you say uh, difficulties you know many people found it very difficult to adopt this osi stack and uh, i've told you guys right uh, ethernet cable comes you know in uh, in the layer 1 it is called as a layer 1 device which is also you know physical device and also hubs are called as uh, you know layer 1 devices and switches uh, comes in uh, here uh, layer 2 which is a uh, you know data link layer next comes you know ip addresses which deals in network layer and next comes you know tcp udp protocols which comes in your uh, in your uh, transport layer and you know uh, http https ftp smtp this all comes in under application layer i know i know, I know. i'm going too fast i know i will mean, show you as this you know simulation mode of this uh, layers work um okay guys here is another simulation mode which is created by network check thank you network check yeah so let's just say uh, uh, this is a laptop with demi here is his laptop he has a laptop and uh, he tries to communicate with this server it has the ip address of 23.227.38.65 i am opening his command prompt okay not not command prompt guys i will i'll open his web browser and i will type <coughs> http and uh, 23.227.38.65 okay you guys have been wondering i guess about you know what is this four digits separated by three dots well this is just an ip address guys for every name or you know every 
what you say a site you open on uh, what do you say in your browser it is linked to some or the other ip address let's just say you know if uh, this google.com and it is linked to linked to an ip address by this call, uh, what do you say protocol i guess uh, protocol dns domain name server so yeah once yeah i've opened in his laptop and i've tried to connect with this server we oh, should simulation for what was sorry yeah yeah so i've uh, you know uh, went and hit enter see this is packet created near dennis laptop and let's forward it it goes to the switch and goes to everyone here and you guys are thinking why does it go to everyone here because the switch it, it is the smartest why it is going to everyone you guys might have that what you say and a uh, doubt it is just because the switch wants to confirm that if does this ip address exist in my network or not it just send these packets it does not receive any other packet if you know this is into mark that is blinking it that just say that you know the ip address does not uh, you know is not in my network you know and when i click next see the packet then now goes to the router because you know the you know uh, entered ip address is not in the network then it just go to the router and then it is connect to, to some switch i guess okay okay the router sends back the information that okay uh, the router is uh, well connected to the server and it is ready to go uh, okay yeah then it creates it creates a whole packet it sends to to the router through the switch to the server okay guys i'll show you guys i'll open this packet and show you guys how does this work see server deals with every layer uh, you know let's just say layer 1 layer 2 layer 3 layer 4 layer 7 layer 1 is just ethernet layer 2 uh, deals with you know the switches uh, that means mac addresses layer 3 ip addresses layer 4 i've told you guys uh, it transports layer 7 you know the http the application layer but when the server sends back to the switch when i open the packet see the all other layers are gone because switch only deals with two layer two layers please fast enough okay uh, layer 1 and layer 2 and uh, when i open the packet in the router it deals with three layers layer 1 layer 2 and layer 3 and uh, again it comes to to the switch it only deals with two layers okay yes and it comes back to deni and deni need the whole thing so yeah seven layers okay then i will move to the next topic OSS stack, uh, TCP IP stack. So, like you know, uh, I've said that there's this battle going on, right? You know, in practical terms, TCP IP emerged as the dominant and the widely adopted model for networking. As the internet grew in prominence, TCP IP was a protocol suit upon which the network was built, but it remains the foundation of modern internet. But whenever we try to understand about how data is uh, you know 
received or transferred through the layers we just uh, try to understand we just try to think in the osl layers but not tcp uh, ip stack because it is easier to understand hence while neither one in traditional sense tcp ip is practical practicality and uh, early implementation led to its widespread adoption and uh, you know uh, prevalence in uh, real world networking applications while osi models set the, set the stage for uh, you know understanding network protocols and uh, influencing the you know networking standards etc okay guys this uh, this logical map you know called as arpanet this shows you know uh, network uh, what do you say Pop, uh, host population of the network Uh, the first map the they used you know connect two devices let's look at it guys it is so confusing i don't even know what's going on here but okay so yeah whenever we talk about information that is transferred to physical layer we call it as bits and uh, information that is transferred through data link layer i mean uh, you know the switches it is called it this called as frames and you know and in network layer it is called as packets transport layer segments and application layer data and yeah see layer one device hubs and other nets which is a physical layer and data link layer switches and bridges network layer i have shown you guys the router and transport layer the you know tcp and udp protocols transmission control protocol and user datagram protocol and this is how you know the data goes through from one system to another system yes see when i have the, let's just take this you know scenario of i have uh, entered some information in my http page here is the data so it goes down like this through the transport layer and you know transport layer adds adds its own uh, header over here and it is called as segment next the uh, transport layer sends this data and uh, level 4 header to the network layer it adds you know level 3 header and data link layer here adds its own uh, trailer and a header which is called as a packet then through this physical layer it goes through the switches through some routers through the internet through you know uh, uh, countries i guess <laughs> through the internet i guess yeah and it goes through this switch and servers physical connection servers data link layer you know it uh, at the first it uh, you know what say it encapsulates then it decapsulates and you know layer to layer it just decapsulates it just opens it just says, okay these l2 headers and l2 trailers you know relate to me then it goes to network layer transport layer and application layer this is how you know data travels through two devices connected to the internet so and also i have i wanted to show you guys you know this is, okay mm. okay yeah yes let's just go to your if you if you guys are using a laptop is go to your command prompt and type ip config and here you guys can see that this is ipv4 address a subdet mask and a default gateway Okay, you guys must have known what is an IP address. Let's just say that it is an address for your computer. You know, uh, it is an address of your commu uh, computer whenever it it tries to talk with another commu computer in the network or over the internet. And what is default gateway, guys? Can anyone do you guys have an idea of what is an default gateway? default gateway guys come on any idea about that default gateway
if you guys don't know just keep it as no or you know i can tell you guys anyone guys anyone come on okay so default gateway is uh, nothing but your router okay a month 29 and node in a computer network that connects to an, uh, other networks okay okay that's good that's good i can say that the default gateway is your router i mean i have told you guys earlier guys uh, earlier about routers and uh, wap side right? <coughs> sorry guys so yeah routers you know they just whenever you try to access a server which is you know located in america let's just say there's this amazon.com you want to access it you know uh, amazon has you know different ip address let's just say amazon has ip address of uh, 85.65.36.214 um, this is the ip address of amazon yes i mean like just 10 <laughs> what do you say example okay whenever we try to ping that uh, ip address you know open uh, in our laptop or on our device it goes through our uh, what do you say uh, through our uh, routers and it, you know these routers connect to other route routers switches in between and let's and gives us the http layer in our browser i mean the process just goes very quickly guys so and uh, and subnet mask and, and uh, even if you guys uh, see uh, watch in your uh, computers when you try uh, Try this IP config command. You guys will notice a subnet mask. And also in every com in every in every computers, like you know, in home in home networks, you will see that the first three will be the same 192.168.29, or the first two as the same. But this last digit changes. Let's just say my uh, computer's IP address is this, and my phone's IP address is something like. Uh, let me just go through my Wi-Fi settings. Yeah, this is my mobile's IP address. Yes. This is my mobile's IP address. See that you know subnet mask is same. The routers uh, and the routers IP address is same. And the IP address, the first three numbers are same, uh, leaving alone the last number which is dot twenty eight. Here it is dot one fifty two. I mean, uh, let's just say the the you can you know connect up to 255 devices in your what do you say in your network i mean if you know the router supports and uh, And also, I am gonna show you guys in photo or you know, seven layers of cyber security. And I have a question for you guys: What is the what is you know weakest layer of security over here? Just answer it, guys. The weakest layer. What is the weakest layer over here? 
here you know you know the, there are some critical assets over here there is data security there is application security endpoint security network security perimeter perimeter security and the human layer the weakest layer yes come on if you guys don't know just keep it as you know no okay just don't chat i guess i'll tell you as what is the weakest layer Human layer maybe yes yes Nitin that's correct human layer is the weakest because uh, mm, you know the human layer this is you know think of a scenario like imagine receiving an email that look like that looks like uh, you know it's from your bank saying there's been suspicious activity on your account and the email urgently asks you to cling click on a link to verify your information or change your password to secure your account this is thing that this you know email is an asset and this is data security application security application security is nothing but your uh, credentials network security is nothing but the security the networks provide like you know firewalls and etc and there's this human layer once you click on that phishing link all this security collapses leaving the information unsafe leaving your credentials everything unsafe that is why the human layer is you know the weakest guys this scenario just illustrates you know on how a simple email appearing to be you know from trusted source can exploit human trust and urgency to deceive you into compromising your personal information and security and this is how attackers exploit human vulnerabilities it is popularly known as you know social engineering guys and uh, yeah the attendance link okay guys i have provided the attendance link in the chat just go and fill it out up until then if you guys have any questions you, you guys can ask me Okay guys, if there's no other questions, I think I will end this stream. So it's a day four attendance. Okay, so guys, once again. Oh shit. Okay, just fill it out, guys. I think there will be no problem. I think this uh, there's been a typing error. Yes, yes, Sirisha Garu. Yeah, there has been some mistake, uh, some typing mistake. 
just go ahead and fill the attendance fill the document Okay guys, I am ending the stream.